Hey everyone, welcome back to an episode of Create with Linda. So guys, it is Saturday and it's around four o'clock and I'm coming on because I'm doing a what's for dinner. Now what's for dinner tonight is meatloaf. Yes, meatloaf. And it's only for me and hubby because Frankie doesn't eat meatloaf. We haven't had meatloaf in a while and so I have London broils so I'm going to make him a half of a London broil. And that's what he'll have and we'll have meatloaf in probably mashed potatoes. So yeah, that's what we're gonna have. So I'm gonna get started on it. It's four o'clock on, like I said, on Saturday. I'm gonna preheat the oven. I'm gonna go in the oven. This is from the other night. I'm good at that sometimes. Put stuff in there, leaving it in there. You got it, it's in there. But it was soaking. Jenny the dress over and um, she uh, she it fits so cute so great it's awesome everything is perfect with it so I'm very excited about that um, let me get a bowl I dropped my cheese grater, guys. I hope I didn't break it. I didn't check it, but I think it's gonna be okay. I think it's gonna be okay. everything up now we like hello yeah I just want to make sure you guys are all on we like meatloaf left over but I'm not making a huge meatloaf I'm just not this right here is about over four and a half pounds I think it was more than that I thought it was more than that but um yeah got it on sale so very excited about that um so let's see I think this will be good right here. Woo! Really? And I always gotta go a little extra. Let's put this over here. I'm going to heat the oven up to 400. I like to do my, I used to just be a 375 girl. Everything that I cooked was 375. But um, I noticed that this oven here, this is a newer oven because the other one that we had that we had when we first moved in here um, was was here and we had to get rid of it because it, it just broke down. But that, that, cook, that oven cooked on a hotter, on a hotter, a 375. It cooked like like 400. This oven here at 375, it cooks like 350, 325 maybe. Oh, so, exactly right. so this one I have to put at 400 now. I, that's what I just do. I put 400. 
Otherwise, everything takes forever. It takes, it's, le it's much quicker if I do it at 400. So anyway, that's why I'm putting it 400. So I'm gonna start out with this meatloaf. I think this should be enough for us. I think so. So let's start seasoning it up. Let's get the seasonings going. We're gonna do garlic. God. Onion. We're gonna do Italian seasoning. And we'll do some dried parsley. And we're gonna do some fresh parsley. And we're gonna put one egg in here. So, a little bit of breadcrumbs and some grated cheese. What? You're gonna get dressed? Jenny's dressed. Oh. I'm like, you're gonna get dressed. Sorry guys, Jenny's dressed some um, is in the car. Don't mind my shirt. I've been working today, you know, I've been doing stuff so it's a little stained up with water and everything else. It is what it is. I'm not trying to win a f I'm not going to a, fa a fashion show. But I do like to look nice for you guys. <laughs> Let's try. Alright, salt and pepper. What are you doing? Daddy, be right back. What are you freaking out for, huh? What are you freaking out for? Um, <laughs> let's put some dried parsley. So the dizziness situation is better today. It comes and goes, but I think, I really do think it has to do with my eyes and it has to do with allergies too, because my nose is constantly running. So I don't know. I'm going to hold off to go to the doctor. I'm going to make an appointment. I made an appointment at the do eye doctor, but for the next week. And so I'm going to hold off to go to the doctor until after the wedding. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll take the care of all that because I don't want to be doing anything before the wedding unless I really had to because... I don't need any issues. I don't know. Sometimes things are just really rough. Onion. Probably about two tablespoons of onion. I don't measure, guys. I just do what I do, and that's it. So you put in as much as you want, to the flavor that you want. Um, it's just up to you, you know. If you think it needs more, put more in. If you, if you want us to just start out with a little, start out with a little so you don't go, you know, so when you, you, you can, can't take it out. You can put it in. What? When you need one to boil, buy it. Oh, not for a while. Okay, because cold on it. Yeah. Okay, so I just put some Italian seasoning in there. Now I'm going to put some garlic. My garlic is getting low. i got to fill this up. I'm also going to put some fresh garlic in. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to grate some fresh garlic in. I have fresh parsley in the, in the thing in here that I can use up. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, you wrap up your parsley in, in a wet paper towel. You rinse it off and you wrap it up in a paper towel and it lasts for like a month in the refrigerator. Basil, forget about it. Basil does not last. It lasts a day or two, and then it's rotten. So I don't, I, I if I'm not going to use it that day or the next day, I don't, I'm not buying fresh basil anymore until I use my garden. You know, I use half my garden, but that's done now. So that's not going to help me. Actually, I do have a, 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 a an or, Oro, Euro planter, which after the wedding, I'm going to have my son set that up for me so I can, I can, grow basil and parsley again but anyway i'm just saying like parsley guys will last for a very very long time and you get you get a lot for your money so and you know yeah so anyway i'm going to put where's the scissor oh. i'm gonna put some parsley because like i said being really spoiled i was being really spoiled with my um with my garden oh my god linda you're a disaster and I had, um, I had fresh parsley and basil mostly all the time. It just was awesome. So um, I, really, I really like to use it in my dishes. But again, and I've said this before on my channel, if you're new here, 
I've, I, there have been times in my life, years and years ago, that, hey, listen, I just couldn't afford fresh, it's not really expensive, but basil is more expensive than parsley, but, um, you know, there was times in my life that I was like, I, I'm, I'm just using my herbs, I can't, like, I can't afford to get, you know, I need formula or I need milk rather than fresh parsley for my kids or, you know, a loaf of bread and grilled and cheese and so there are times when we never ever used fresh. And my food has always been delicious. Yeah, so you don't need it, but it just is definitely, I prefer it. It's just a preference. And I'm just cutting it and I'm just doing it, you know, just doing it roughly. I'm just cutting it up a little smaller. I don't really want stems, but you know. Ow! Note to self, Linda, don't cut your finger. When you think you put too much fresh parsley in, add a little more. Because you know what? And basil, you could never put too much in. I'm sorry, that's just... I mean, if you like it. If you don't like it, then it's of course, and it's one thing. Then, you know. But. I love it. I need my meatballs and my gravies and my sauces. On my pastas. It's a nice finishing little touch. A nice bright little touch. All right. So. That. I'm only going to put a little bit of breadcrumbs in because I'm trying to lay off the carbs again like usual. Always. Probably about a half a cup. Because I don't like a lot of breadcrumbs in my in my meatloaf or my um, balls and stuff anyway because I don't want, I want it, I want to taste the meat. I don't want to like it be masked with all those breadcrumbs. You know the breadcrumbs, I, I want it to be meat and I, I don't want to taste all breadcrumbs. Let me get an egg. I just need one egg for this. And if you're new on my, if you're new to my channel, you won't know. Um, you probably won't know that um, I am. I am a very big stickler on. Did I put grated cheese in there? I don't think I did yet. I'm a stickler on because um, my mom did this. My mother would. Her. Um, I'm putting a little warm water in it because it's going to be chilly. Um, my mom put a lot of liquid, a lot of water in her meatloafs and her meatballs and her meatloaf and meatballs and all that so, always so delicious and always so moist. Now it doesn't have to be water. If you prefer milk, I know some people who just do milk, like my, my friend Jerry Ellen from Cooking with Neighbors, who go check her channel out guys, Jerry Ellen Cooking with Neighbors. I'm not even kidding, she's doing the most wonderful baking stuff right now because of the fall and everything. She's a great, great baker, she's a great cook. Guys, go check her out. Cooking with Neighbors, Jerry Allen. Also go check out uh, Shorty Va Vaughn at Crazy But Not Dangerous. Um, she is, um, she's been, she's had a channel for a while. She's building her channel up, trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So please go help her out and subscribe to her channel. Check her out. She's so funny. She's so great. Yay, hooray is what she says all the time. So I love it. I love it. And, um, yeah, so go check those people out, and you will see, guys. They're awesome. Um, so, uh, anyway, so Jerry Ellen uses milk in her, um, in, I notice, in her stuff, where I use water. Some people use chicken broth. Some people use water. You know, whatever you want to use. It's up to you. But my mom, that's how she was. So I'm make sure my hands are nice and clean. My mom used water. And it was always delicious. And um, I'll show you the consistency of my, of how I like my meatloaf and my meatballs. Um, that they, it has to be wet to the touch. If it's wet to the touch, then that means it's going to be moist. It's going to be a moist meatloaf, a moist meatball, whatever, a moist um, you know stuffed pepper, or, you know stuffed cabbage, however, whatever you do, it's going to be delicious. 
And yes, we call our chop, we call our ground beef chop meat. When I say I'm gonna make a chop meat gravy, some people say bolognese, and I know in Canada they say minced meat, or they say, uh, what do they say, ground beef, I'm not sure. But we say chop meat, so that's how we say it. I don't say ground beef, I say I need to get chop meat. That's what I say, and that's how it's always been presented to me. Mm. Now, another thing I do, guys, when I make my meat mixtures is I smell it. When I make my meatballs, when I make my meatloaf again, I smell it. If I don't smell herbs, then I know I, I need to put a little bit more. That's just me. I smell some herbs, but I smell mostly the fresh parsley. So, guess what that means? I'm gonna put a little bit more. And if I was making my meatloaf, my meatballs, I would take a little bit of it and put and fry it up, but uh, and then taste it to make sure and see if it needs anything. I'm not doing that with meatloaf. I'm not gonna do that. But so I'm just gonna use my judgment. And 95% of the time. It all comes out fine. Um, so I'm mad at myself because I always forget to leave the seasonings open. And now I gotta open the seasonings again and I'm gonna have to wipe it all down. Ooh. See, I, I don't like when I do that because then I have to, it just makes double work for me, but that's okay. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Garlic. Oh, I didn't mince any garlic in here. Eh. My hands are dirty now, I'm not gonna do it, so I'll just put the garlic powder. I'm not gonna put any parsley in it. I'll put some onion, some more onion powder, and I'll put a little bit of salt. And def definitely more water. I can tell you that right now. So I'm going to smell it. I might put a little bit more cheese in it, just a drop, because I put in more salt, so I don't want to add a lot more cheese. Mmm, smells so yummy. Sometimes I put mozzarella in my meatloaf, in my meatballs. Um, I just mix some shredded mozzarella in there, or um, whatever kind of cheese you want. You can put cheddar or my, you know, whatever you want to put in. But um, I'm not doing that today. So I have three cheese in there, which is fine. Let's do this. All right. Like I said, just a little bit because I have um, put I put salt in it. All right. So this to me, it's it's almost perfect. It needs a drop more water, and then it'll be perfect. So I gotta get my pan out. I don't make my meatloaf in a in a in a meatloaf pan, those little squirt, those little narrow um, meatloaf pans, because I feel like when you do that, the meatloaf just gets tough. I don't like a hard, tough meat meatloaf. I like my meatloaf to be moist, and even if it looks like it's a flat big pancake, I don't care because as long as it tastes good, that's all I care about. So you don't want to mix, go crazy mixing this because then you make the meat tough as well. So just give it a couple more mixes, you know, and it's good. Everything is good, and I think this is a perfect size meatloaf because, like I said, it's just me and hubby, and we do like to have meatloaf sandwiches. We do like to have meatloaf, um, you know, the next day and all of that. So, and it's like I said, it's only us two. So I'm learning how to cook for just us. Um, okay, so now my hands are dirty. I'm gonna wash my hands because then I have to get the pan out and that's in the cabin behind you. So I think I think there might be one in the bottom and we'll put in the stove. Because I like to make my meatloaf. Now I used to put brown gravy on top of my meatloaf. Sometimes I still do, but I find I found that there was so much like grease because I used 20, 80, 20 percent, 80, you know, fat, whatever, in um, ground beef, chopped chop meat. So it, it gave off a lot of grease, and then like the the, the gravy would be kind of gre greasy. So I don't do that anymore. I just put water a little, just I, I just let it cook like that, and then I make gravy. I always make gravy with meatloaf, 99.9 .9 percent of the time. I make gravy because I make mashed potatoes with meat and meatloaf. And so we'll have meatloaf, we'll have gravy on the side that, you know, you can put on top of your meatloaf. But yeah, and my mom, 
growing up, my mom, mother would make, sometimes she would make it with red sauce, with like a can of crushed tomatoes or a can of tomato sauce. Oh my God, it's so good. I love it in red sauce, but I rarely make it like that once in a blue moon because hubby prefers it with brown gravy, which I like it with brown gravy too. Why? Well, no, I know I could do what I want. If I wanted to, I can put it with red gravy, but we do prefer the brown gravy. Once in a while, I like the red. Once in a while, I like the red. It's fine. I'm not going to die. Like, if I wanted to really do it, I would do it. He's not sitting here telling me, don't you dare put red sauce in there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is not going to fit. Uh, okay, let me see if I can get this without crashing. Sticking my head, hitting my head into my head or having to get the stool. I hate getting the stool. It's such a pain, but I'm short, so. Right, here we go. So guys, I have to tell you, let me tell you something. I'm gonna go back in later and I'm gonna put that recipe down that I'm uh, yesterday that I made of that cheeseburger soup. Oh my God, it was so good. They devoured it. There was like this much left. I had a little tiny bowl. It was very, very, very good. I would definitely tweak it a little bit, but they loved it. So that's going to be in, in rotation. I'm going to try to put the recipe down there, but if I don't, just go Google, go to Pinterest, go Google cheeseburger soup. There are millions of them out there. I just made it kind of my own. If you go back and look at the video, it was so delicious. I, next time, I won't put the noodles in the, um, in the crock pot with, with the food because the noodles tend to get very soft either that or um make enough where you're just going to eat the whole thing at one time and you eat it right away if you don't eat it right away make the noodles separate and then add the noodles to the soup this way you'll have nice al dente noodles my noodles were they were good but they were just at the end they were you have to heating it up and you know they got very mushy but anyway i would do that i would definitely add more chopped meat i didn't add i want to i definitely would have added another like half a pound of chopped meat. Um, what else? The potatoes were amazing. I used the canned potatoes. They were so, so good. I'm definitely gonna use canned potatoes from now on when I make it because it was, they were so good. It was perfect. And um, I don't know, I think that's really, that's it. That, that's really the only thing, but you could put anything you want in it. It was so delicious. The cheese and then I put, we've, so good guys. That's a winner. That's going to be, I'm going to make that probably next week again. Love that crock pot meal. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you guys that. All right, so let, let's get this in. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on. Can you guys see this? A little bit of olive oil on. I'm thirsty. On the bottom, just a little bit. Not a lot. And this is how I do it, guys. Let me show you. I can remember my mother doing this. Watch. So here you go. See? <laughs> and that's what I do. And I make it, shape it into my own little thing. Now, like I said, it looks like a little dome. You could do it any way you freaking want. I'll do a fat, do, do whatever the hell you want. You know what I mean? It's your, it's your meatloaf. It's your meatloaf, it's your kitchen. It's your thing. So do whatever you want, guys. There's no police that are going to come to you and say, excuse me. Well, there are police, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and some people will tell you. Some people will say, Linda, you didn't do that right. Or Linda, didn't you do this? Or Linda, you didn't. Listen, this is my channel, ladies. This is my channel, people. I'm just joking with you guys. But yeah, do what you want. It's your kitchen. It's your recipe. I'm telling you, it's very hard for me to go buy a recipe. Even my friend, Jerry Allen, will say to me, but Linda, you asked me for the recipe and then you don't go by the recipe. I'm like, I know, I'm sorry, I try. Like when I bake, you know, you have to really kind of, you have to go by the measurements and stuff like that. But I'm always adding something else or taking something out or something like that. But I just can't follow a recipe. Like, it's very hard for me to do it. I'm always doing my own spin on it, my own tweaking. That's just the way I am because I love to create and I, it just, I just love it. So yeah, and that's fine. All right, so you see how like it's, uh, I'm, I'm shaping it into like a dome, but then it's gonna like go flat. So that's why I heat the oven up because I want the oven 
I want it to get it in the oven so it stays kind of like a dome, but it really doesn't matter. I don't care what it looks like. So here we go. So this is gonna shrink up a little bit. This is gonna be the perfect amount of, of, of you know, meatloaf. Alexis at the timer for 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Now, now, some people put ketchup on their, um, on their meatloaves, which is fine. I've never done it, but I think it would be really good. I'd like to try it because I do like the red sauce. So uh, maybe one day, maybe even tonight, I don't know, maybe I'll put ketchup on one part of it and see. I might do that. I might, might, might do it. We'll see. But um, it looks delicious. I've never had it like that. I've seen people do it. I've seen people put ketchup in the actual meatloaf mixture. Hey, listen, do whatever you think, whatever your your recipe is, however you grew up with it. People go by what how they grew up. You know, everything is you 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 do what you were, what you what you were taught, and what you saw, and that's what it, and that's what it's about. Family, you know, family. You eat family get-togethers. Um, family recipes, family, you know, traditions. Love it, love it, love it. So I have so many in my head for my mother and um, and I gave my daughter and daughter and my son I'm gonna give recipes to. And just so, because if you guys, this is a tip, okay? Kind of weird, but if I always thought to myself, oh, I can't make my grandmother's freaking, you know, um, uh, cannolis or my grandmother's uh, this anisette cookies because I always felt like oh they're not going to be as good but you know what even if they're not as good and they never will be like your nannies like your grandmas like your nanas like your great-grandmother whatever they're never ever ever your mom your auntie your whatever they're never it's never going to taste 100 percent and the reason is is because you're doing it they're not doing it and they put their own little special touches in that you never even know about that's what i'm talking about so um but i always wanted my my kids like i gave i gave them the recipes and i know that they'll probably Ju julie will probably end up putting her own little t touches on it too which will be like a history type of memory thing for her kids later on and then her kids and her kids but what i'm trying to get to is let me get to the point is that even if I can't have my grandmother's exact taste of a cookie or a, 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 a spinach pie or things like that, I will have that familiar taste, which reminds me of my family member, my loved one. And that's what I want for Julie and my kids. I want them to say, oh, this reminds me of mom. Or, you remember when mom did this? Or you remember when dad you know, did this? And this, that's what I want. That's what I want for my kids. The memories I want them to have is in their head and in their taste buds and stuff like that. That's what family's about. That's what tradition is about. And so I always want them to have that memory. And then it goes on and on and on with, with each with each person that's in your family. So I love that. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. So I hope that's, you know, it's very meaningful to me. It's very meaning it's a very meaningful thing. And I really, really, really wanted to pass that on to you guys. So yeah, so share that with your friends and your family and whatever. If you want to, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Anyway, so I'm going to wash my hands, get stuff together. Um, I'm trying to think I might either make a zucchini or string beans with it. I'm definitely going to make mashed potatoes and gravy. Um, maybe I'll make corn. You know what? I think I'm going to make the, this too because I feel like vegetables tonight. Again, I'm vegetable crazy. Um, I'm, going to make some, I'm going to make a zucchini. I only bought one. I, don't, I used to buy two or three and they used to rot. Now I buy one at a time because that's it. Um, I'm going to make a can of corn because corn, we always have corn, not always, but most of the time, corn, mashed potatoes and gravy and meatloaf. So yeah, that's what my mother, my, that was a memory of my mom and mother used to always make corn, mashed potatoes and meatloaf. So again, a tradition. So yeah, it just brings back, you know, memories and just keeps, it keeps your loved ones who have passed inside here in your heart and therefore they'll never be gone. I always say when you lose a loved one, keep them in down in your heart if you if they're always in your heart therefore they can never be gone i tell my everybody that that loses people may not help it may help them i don't know but that's what how i feel so just always have them in your heart and then they'll always be with you guys all right that's enough preaching i'm not preaching i'm just talking anyway so i'm going to make the, the zucchini i'm going to make a can of corn i'm going to wash my hands get straightened up here and then i will be back with you very chatty today aren't i all right, so I'm gonna do it in my electric skillet tonight. If you like doing the 
the um, the zucchini in here. So I'm gonna plug this in. But I gotta cut up the zucchini. Uh, what's he doing? Again? Yeah. Cooper thinks that he's... I don't know what I'm going to do, guys. I really don't. I, we've made this puppy, this 95-pound puppy, this three-year-old 85-pound three um, 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 puppy into um, uh, a monster because this dog, he thinks that the, his, the bed is his. I can't even sleep. This morning, I literally was this close to going on the couch because I just, and the thing about him is that he's dead weight. He's dead weight. Like when he lays himself down on the bed and there's, you can't move him. You try to push him, he, you can't, he's so heavy and fat, you can't move him. That's the first thing. The second thing is he thinks that, uh, oh, when Billy leaves the bed in the morning to go to work, I'm like, okay, cool, move over, because now, because I really have a queen size bed, and it's not even a king size bed, and he's, you know, in the middle of us, and we're on the edge, and he's in the middle, nice and sprawled out with his paws, and his paws hitting us, and his, in the face, and the nose, he breathes, and he puts his head on our pillows, and breathes in our face. I'm going to try to videotape it one time without showing any Billy sleeping or anything. I'm going to try to videotape it. You won't even believe this dog. He is the most spoiled, cutest Thing you ever want to meet in your life he really is he's such a cuddle bug but he also is it's too much like we're old our 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 old we're old in our body and whatever guys whatever it is but um what was i saying i lost my train of thought could you help me um oh billy gets out of the bed to go to work he it doesn't matter if there's there's a 95 percent of the time he'll still lay right on top of me i'll push him to go over onto the other side maybe he'll get up and then he'll lay he'll lay himself in billy's part in billy's spot like a person i literally am not kidding i have pictures of that when I, i'm going to find them and try to insert them in a video i don't know if tonight but if i remember i'll try to insert them in a video but guys he's like a person he lays on the pillow like this like he's billy or he just continues to just push me off the bed. He has to have body contact. He's very, 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 you know, like needy and all of that. And uh, I love him to death. But then when he's not in the bed, like sometimes he'll sleep in the living room when, when, when Bro Bro sleeps here, because we leave them in the living room because that's a nightmare. We used to have them both in the bed. Brody was on our head. Cooper was on our stomach. It was a nightmare because Brody's a, a needy one too. So cute. Um, so we let them sleep in the living room now because this way he's not alone. And um, what was I saying? <laughs> I totally lose it. As I'm talking, I totally lose my, 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 my speak. Oh, um, oh, yeah. When he's not in the bed, I'm like, oh, my God, where's, where's Cooper? You know, it, it's, so, it's such a double-edged sword, guys. I don't know. But uh, I, I'd miss him if he wasn't there. I mean, it is, it is what it is. But, yeah, yeah, that's fun. So I just thought I'd give you a little bit of, what's going on with this? Why isn't this plugging in? Oh, okay. All right, so let's, let's just see. Let me get a knife. Um, I gotta peel it, I'm gonna peel it. Do I want to peel it? Do I peel it? Some I forget if I don't peel the um. I think I usually do peel the zucchini. I usually don't peel it perfect. I don't. I don't mind if it's a little bit. Let me tell you something. It's been raining every weekend. The last four weeks since October started, it's been raining every weekend. 
It's been raining every week and that the, that the farms, like the, um, the, 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 the fall farms, you know, that have like all the hay rides and the this and the that, they haven't been able to do anything because of all the rain that's been accumulating in their, at, on their properties. It's been raining, so we're like, oh God, you know, it's October, Julie's having her wedding, October 29th. She wanted it like in the middle of October, like October, the weekend before that, but it was all booked up. The last spot was the October 29th, and that's what she wanted, she wanted fall. She didn't want to go into November, you know? So anyway, so um, uh, it's been raining. Last weekend we were like, oh no, they were, they were saying, I'm trying to think how I'm gonna cut these. Um, we were seeing that it was going to rain again this weekend. It's been raining on Saturdays and being nicer on Sundays, which her wedding's on a Sunday. So, um, uh, this weekend, guys, oh my God, coming up, her wedding, they said it's going to be 66 and partly sunny. Yeah, so I'm just hoping it's because her ceremony's outside. It's beautiful. That's what she wanted, the fall scene. All of that. If it rains, it's just gonna. It's it's gonna be out inside. There's no way. It's just, we can't have it outside. So I'm so I'm so praying that it stick. It holds like that. No rain. It's gonna be a beautiful day. I'm so excited, guys. I can't wait. Can't wait. Um, I'll just cut them like this, I guess. I don't want them really thick, but I don't want them really thin. Either. We'll cook faster, but I'm just gonna cook all of these because I will eat them. If I don't cook it, it's gonna go bad. I like a zucchini raw. Have you ever had zucchini raw? It's really good. I gotta make gravy too. So. That's a big ass zucchini. I could even really freeze it if I wanted to. Yeah, I'll cook it all. And then if I if I notice that I'm not eating it all, I'll freeze it. I'll freeze the cooked some of it. I don't like zucchini, but more than I like squash. Comment down below what you like better. I like squash, don't get me wrong, but I like zucchini better. That's just me. sea salt and then I'll use my Mrs. Dash. I told you I'm trying to go I'm trying to go lighter on the um on the salt. I'm gonna put some fresh garlic in yeah I need to get um Oh, that's what I didn't get, Bill. I need to, gonna have to go and um, check out ShopRite or something or somewhere else for um, for um, garlic cloves because they didn't have it at Walmart. Of course, they were out of it. I was like, oh, and I needed like a big bag of it. Maybe, oh, I really should. Sam's in the place, but I'm not gonna be going, I'm not going to Sam's. What am I doing? I'm not gonna go to Sam's. I don't wanna go all the way over there, so I'll figure it out. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, I could always do it the old-fashioned way and have the other garlic with the tongue. If I have to do it, I'll do it. I have, I have a, a bulb in there. But it's just when you're using it a lot, when you're using a lot of it, it's easier. And I could actually put this in my chopper. I forget that I have my chopper. I always forget about it. And then after the fact, I'm like, oh, shoot, I can use my chopper. I just want to lower this a little bit because I don't want the, um, that burning. because then it'll burn. This way it'll just... And one thing I noticed about my electric um, frying pan is that if you... Um, you know what I forgot that I had too? I have, a, I have a, um, an, an electric... Um, what is the things that you cook on? You know, it's like a flat thing. You just plug it in. It's just electric, um, like, like, the, like the stove top thing. You know what I mean? I have that, but I hardly ever use it. I forgot that I had that. What was that? Oh, that you see this, guys? I love when the zucchini or the broccoli or whatever vegetable I'm making gets like this. I'll show you. This is where it's at. That's why I like it. I like the flame a little bit higher because that's what I want right there is the char. That char right there is where it's at. That's where it's at. That's flavor. That's flavor. Pepper. Italian herbs. No, I don't need parsley in that. Garlic. And onion. I like the, I really like onion powder. I didn't use. I used to never really use it, and then I was like, "Oh, I gotta get onion powder and use that too." I, garlic was always the one that I always went to, and then I was like, "Oh, I gotta get onion." And then I, ever since I started using it, that's I, I have to have. Now it's like I have to have it. If I'm out of onion powder, I'm like, "Oh my god, I don't have any onion powder." <laughs> Mm. Oh my god, it's so good. I add a little grated cheese to it. I'm a grated cheese girl. Parmesan is the girl. It changes everything in a recipe. Try a little bit of parm, guys. Ooh. If your kid won't eat something, try to put a little parm on it. And guess what? They'll eat it. All right, so, okay. All right, guys, so I shut that. Um, I shut, well, I don't even know what I was talking about. Yeah, anyway, um, um, so I'm gonna, oh yeah, I shut this, I put this on warm, and I'm just gonna leave it on heat, you know, just let it keep on warm, because I don't want it to burn and overcook. I want them to have a little bite to them. So I'm gonna do gravy. I'm gonna do one bag of gravy now. Sometimes I make two. Then I always have it left over because it's only us and I only have a little bit. My husband likes a lot of gravy, but when I make, if I make two um, and I'm, you know, I usually, I could use it during the week. I could use the rest of it. And sometimes I, now I freeze it and I use it. I do utilize it. I have been utilizing it, but I'm just going to make one packet and to make it stretch, I'm going to tell you how to make it stretch. If you want to make a little bit more than the two cups, than the one cup that this makes, first of all, I always add more than one cup to one packet. I never just do one cup. That's nothing. I usually do like two cups. And then I put my own seasonings in it and everything else. And if I'm making beef and stuff, then I'll put some of that, that beef juice into the, the gravy, which flavors it more. But with chopped meat, 
I'm not gonna do that because that's more mainly grease. That's maybe oil. That's you know, I'm not gonna put that in my in my gravy. But what I'll do is I'll put a little beef broth or chicken broth if I didn't have beef, and a little. That's when I'll put a little bit more water in it, and just a little bit of beef broth, not much because it's a lot of sodium. But um, that's how you can stretch your gravy a little bit more. So that that's a tip for you guys. Tip of the day. And yes, my I will be saying my hope quotes very shortly. All right, so I'm gonna add this packet and let like like I said, I don't even really measure. I always just do this. This is what I do. And it's cold water, guys. So that's probably about a cup. I I go as far as what it looks like. Like, so it's like halfway full. Okay. Um, let me try to face she's over here. You're not the boss of me now. Cause you're not so big. Alright. Life is unfair. Okay. I'm just singing. Okay. So here's a gravy. Now, I'm going to start it out on this flame over here, but I'm going to shortly take it off of there and put it on the back low burner, because this is a medium-high burner, burner. Pepper, a lot of pepper in our gravy we like. That's why I like, I love that country gravy. It's, it's like a, a peppery sausage gravy. Ooh, it's so good, and it has so much pepper in it, and then I add more pepper to it. Just love it. I'm like my dad. My dad used to love, love, love pepper. He would ask if it wasn't, he just was a pepper freak. And I and I had that. And I'm proud to be like my dad. I miss my dad. Onion powder. My dad's gone, um, I think it'll be three years. No, I think it'll be four. Is it four years already? I don't know, three or four years at the end of January. And it feels like forever. My mom's gone 26 years. This is garlic, so I put garlic, onion, um, and salt and pepper. That's what I put in my gravy. My mom's gone 26 years. My mother died suddenly of a of a brain of a, um, of a lung aneurysm, an, um, an embolism, pulmonary embolism. So it was very sudden. At 60 years old, dropped dead. It was the most saddest thing and most shocking thing ever. That was 26 years ago. I was just. It was like my 31st birthday. I think she died in July I think I was 31 so that's what's sad but yeah yeah they, they've been gone you know so um it's rough you know how it is guys all right so I'm mixing this I'm gonna let it come to a little bit of a boil hopefully I'll remember because usually it ends up going all over the place and it's not fun uh, so I'm going to let it come to a little simmer, uh, rapid simmer, then I'm going to put it on the, um, on the other burner. I'm going to get a can of corn out. i got to put this away. I'm going to get a can of corn out, and then I'll be back. All right, so I'm going to put a little, like I said, a little bit of the bouillon in here. This is the, um, the beef powder. Just a little, because I added, like I said, I added more water. And if it, it, it usually thickens up, but if it doesn't, I'll put a little slurry in it. Because we don't, my husband doesn't really like it thick. He likes it like medium. Doesn't like it too thin, but he doesn't like it in the, too, too thick. One time I made it really thick. He's like, what, what happened to the gravy? Like, what do you mean what happened to the gravy? He's like, it's so thick. You train them one way, and then if it's different, oh boy, just like the kids. You train them one way, and then all of a sudden... You give them something, and you're like, he's like, whoa, is, is that different? Like, sometimes I'll make, like, a, you know, Italian gravy or whatever, and I'll use, I always use two de Russo tomatoes, 98, 99.9 point .9 of the time. And he'll he'll say to me sometimes, did you use two de Russo? I said, yeah, why? He's like, because it doesn't taste the same. It's very tart. It's very this. It's very that. He doesn't realize that tomatoes... Tomatoes are, each tomato in, in each can is completely different because it's the way it's grown and whatever. 
So um, I use I usually taste my my sauces or my gravy to make to see if it's tart. If it's a little tart, you put a little sugar in it, and that takes the tartness out. But he's good for that. Oh, did you did you use the, uh, the that thing? And I'm like, oof, that makes me so mad. I want to strangle him when he does that because I know that he knows that I know what he likes. So you know, maybe once in a blue moon, I'll try to get away with trying to trick him at some point if I don't have something. But he always knows. Okay, see so you guys, you see how that's coming to a boil? And that's what I always do. I always end up spilling it all over the all over the stove. So I like it for I like for it to do that. And then I'm gonna put it on the lower flame, on the lowest part, and let it simmer low there. I'll check it in a few minutes um, to see if it needs any um, any any thickness to, uh, added to it. Corn, I just um, I opened up. Let me get that going. That goes right in the microwave. I don't, I normally, most, the majority of the time, unless I'm making my fried corn, I always just put corn in a bowl and I put it in the microwave. That's what I do. Butter, salt, and pepper, and you're done. My husband's watching um, Malcolm in the Middle, and do you ever hear the song? I hope I don't get copyrighted or something. You're not the boss of me now. You're not the boss of me now. You're not the boss of me now, and you're not so big. I love that. Life is unfair. Yeah, it sure is, guys. What the hell is this? What is this on here? that oh that was when I, I just had the thing there okay I was like what the heck is that all right garlic powder this is this the crispy one now that um this is a bowl and basket I'm surprised I didn't buy the crispy one that's why you I never buy corn oh I bought it at ShopRite I hardly ever buy my vegetables or anything at ShopRite but they were on sale they were like 59 cents or something when I go to ShopRite to get my meat if there's sale, whatever sales there are, just like um, Price Chopper, um, I get the sale items. And that was really cheap. So I think I got like four or five cans that day or three or four cans that day. So, yeah, that's what I do. All right, a little bit of salt. I'm not going to put Mrs. Dash on this. I'm putting a little salt. Pe uh, corn needs salt. I'll show you my, my fried corn recipe one day. Um, I haven't made it in a while, but it's really, really good. It's very simple. It's just basically corn in a frying pan with seasonings and grated cheese, butter. Oh, it's delicious for a change, but no, that's right. So I'll put like a tablespoon, teaspoon of butter. And then I'm going to stick this in the microwave and wait for everything to be just about done. And when we're ready to eat, I'll heat it up. Um, sometimes I forget about the corn and then I go into the microwave after, after dinner and stuff. And be like, oh my God, we forgot the corn. Corn, 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 bell. Now, what? remind me that we have corn in the microwave, uh, <laughs> so I don't forget. I need that. Oh, these are. I'm gonna shut this because I feel like it's getting um, it's it's it, it's on warm, but it's still like cooking. I don't want it to get completely soggy. No, I can just it, it like that. So I'm gonna put this in the microwave and leave it there, so we're ready. Here's Koopy, but oh, you wanna say hi? Oh, what? What? You got corn in the microwave. Oh, thanks. Hi, Coop. Come here, Coopy. Coopy, say hi. Like he's really going to say hi. He only talks to me. And me. So, guys, this is what I do with, with my parsley, okay? I'm gonna cut the ends, a little bit of the ends off because they're very long and I need to fit them in my bag. So I'm gonna cut the ends off. Where's that knife? Like this. Oh, that was a quick 45 minutes. Shit, shoot. Shoot. Alexa, stop. 
So I'll check that in a minute because I don't want that to overcook because we like our meatloaf. We don't like it raw, you know, like rare, like we like a burger, but we like it, you know, we don't like it overcooked. You know that, that's what I'm saying. All right, so. Well, that's what I'm saying. We don't like it like we like our burgers, but we don't even like our burgers moving. We like our burgers rare, but not over, you know. You get it, right, guys? I know you guys are very smart. You understand, you understand what I'm saying. All right, let's get the meat and milk out and check it. It's 45 minutes. So I'll see. I'll show you what I mean by all that grease. See how the grease is? That's 80-20. If I got, like, lean, really lean, like 95-5 or 90-10, then I wouldn't have all that grease. But I like it. I don't mind it. It really does flavor the meat to me is dry if it's not 80 20 and that's just my preference so no you don't get it you don't get a um a vote you see that's fat now um if i strained all this fat i could do that like i could strain this in a strainer and use this juice this um you know but i'm not going to do that but it's kind of looking like it's done, but I'm gonna get the thermometer and see what it's at. And this way I'll know. Oh, and I gotta get the water going. For, I'm doing 3,000 things at once. This is what I do. What am I coming in here for? Oh, the thermometer. This is what I do, I get sidetracked. I was doing the parsley. I check in the meatloaf. I gotta make mashed potatoes. I think chopped meat is supposed to be. I, I, I'm so forgetful. Alexa, what is ground beef supposed to be when it's done? Oh. Ground beef is considered safe to eat when it has reached an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. Well, this is this is definitely done. Because it's saying one. That's 167. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the oven and I'm going to put it back in the oven just until, so it stays a little bit warm, just until get the mash done. Um, all right, let's heat up the water for the mash. I'll continue with that parsley in a minute. Oh God, I got it. Well, that's all right. I don't, um, I do my, I usually do my quotes, yeah, before dinner. So um, I'll do that while I'm making the um heating up the water i'm gonna put the water for the for the mashed potatoes in first and then i'll do the corn at the end um okay there's a quote i'm gonna do it right now because i know exactly the quote i'm doing a different quote today did i do that yesterday no i didn't give me Give me one second. Let me go get the hope quote because I don't know it by heart yet. All right, guys. So this is my hope quote. This is a hope session part of my videos. I do it now on my what's for dinners because I just feel like it's better. It's it just better. So that's what I'm doing. So this is the, um, I'm pretty sure this is the 10th day. I think it's the 10th day. 8th, the 9th. I think it's the 10th day of my 30-day um, series that I'm doing on um, inspiring you know, inspirational hopes, um, hope uh, uh, quotes. So anyway, this is it. So I always start with this because this this thirty day session is about hope, 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 hope. Of all the forces that make for what a better world, none is so powerful as hope. With hope, one can think, one can work, one can dream. If you have, if you have hope, you have everything. All right, guys, here's the quote. Now, this isn't out of any, any of, my, of my books. Um, I have a strength, a love, and a, and a peace book. This is out of, this is a quote that I, that I read, passing by it, and I read it, and I just thought it was really, 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 really amazing. So this is what I'm going to tell you now. No matter what you are going through today, don't quit. Don't feel defeated. You are doing the best you can. Remember, giving up, is not who you are. You may pause, take a long breath, pivot, or find solutions, 
breathe, but always keep going. I'm going to read it again. No matter what you are going through today, don't quit. Don't feel defeated. You are doing the best you can. Remember, giving up is not who you are. You may pause, take a long breath, pivot or find solutions, but always keep going. Motivation, feelings, and thoughts. That's who wrote that or whatever. But that's what I have to really, I, I look at this quote that sometimes because it really, sometimes you get really defeated over an incident, over a little thing, over a big thing, whatever. You get very defeated very quickly and you have to really realize that it's okay. Just keep going. Just, you know, if you get knocked down, just keep going. You got to get up again. You got to get up again for you, for your family, for whoever. Don't let anybody dull your shine. Just get up there and do it. And I hope that quote helps you guys out. Just don't let anybody defeat you or let, don't feel defeated. You're doing the best you can and just know that about yourself. Know that guys and live it, okay? Okay, so that's my, that is my verse, my quote for the day. That's my 10th quote. Um, and we'll continue that tomorrow, but we're gonna eat now. So I'm gonna heat up the, 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 um, the mash, the, the, gonna heat up the water which I did already a little bit but I'm gonna cut the meatloaf I'm gonna do this after I put it in a bag I rinse the parsley put it in a bag with, with a wet paper towel wrap it up good in the paper towel put it in the bag and then it stays for a month a month in your refrigerator even more I'm telling you it's awesome so do that when you when you bring your fresh parsley home I even did it with dill and it really worked it worked pretty good with dill also yeah so let's get the meatloaf Alright, let's heat the water up again because I heated it up already. And it's probably cold by now because I've been yakking. I've been yakking. Alright, let's get the meatloaf out. We'll cut it up. I'm just gonna cut it right in right in the pan. And then we're just gonna mix the mashed potatoes up and then we're we're ready to eat. Everything is ready. I love meatloaf too because it's like a one pot. You know, you set it up, you, 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 you make it up, you set it, and you forget it. got to put my hope quote away because um I don't I haven't memorized it yet but I should I should really by the time the 30 days are up I'll probably memorize I usually show it I forgot to show it but there it is okay corn has to go in let's cut the meat and we're, we're really ready to eat guys that's it ready to eat let's cut it with this knife I don't have to dirty another knife um, so this chopped meat right here that I got on sale at ShopRite, um, this will be probably either lunches and it'll be probably like two, two or three, well, probably like two more meals and then maybe half of it, a quarter of it or half of it will be for like burgers for lunch or something. So that's going to, that was a really, really good buy for that. So, hubby likes his meatloaf very, very thin. This is cooked perfectly. And guys, it's moist as anything. Let me get um. Now, if you don't want any of this grease, this, you know, use a leaner meat, like I said, or you can drain the meat out. It's up to you. You know, it's all up to your, all your preference. So, so good. See how moist it is? I'm gonna show you. Oh, the best with may on may on a sandwich with mayonnaise. Woo! So freaking yummy. Yeah, it's about to me now. In your nuts. Let me get a thing of mashed potatoes. And you see, guys, let me show you. Let me show you. Watch this. This is what I love about this stuff. You see, is this one have it on it? Yeah. You see that parsley in there, the fresh parsley? It's dripping all over. That's where it's at. All right. Uh, let's 
get the um, let's get the bowl out. I need the thing out. Now this doesn't call for this this bag here of instant mash doesn't call for um for milk. I always put a little milk in it. I don't care. Which one the what? Um, one of the smaller ones. If there's a small one, bring that one up. If not, just bring up whatever and I'll just, you know, cut it in half. Um, these are amazing. They're amazing. So two cups of milk, of water. Um... Drop of milk, this is 2%. Water bottles are falling out of my head. <laughs> oh, I put the others in the freezer, right? Yeah. Okay, just bring whatever it is up, honey. Okay. Let's mix this up. And we're ready to eat. I'm going to heat the corn up. Guys, let me tell you something. There's nothing like real mashed potatoes. Nothing like it. But my mom, growing up, always bought a big, huge box of Hungry Jack potatoes, and that's what we ate. And yeah, we loved it. She doctored it up. What? I said, she doctored it up, and it was delicious. He's saying I give him the fake ones. Meanwhile... He tells me all the time, he loves these, these mashed potatoes, the, the garlic ones, especially, and especially the, um, I used to get them at Aldi, I used the Aldi brand, it's so good. Sometimes I'll get the other brand, you know, the, um, the name brand, garlic, if they don't have the, if they don't have the store brand, but I prefer, I prefer the store brand, and this one is the garlic, so good. Perfection. But anyway, my mother, we grew up on Hungry Jack's mashed potatoes, and it was so good. I'll never forget it. All right, so dinner's all ready. Oh, let me heat the corn up. And then we're going to be ready, guys. I'll have, right. I'll have my plate. Right Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Billy. He just reminds me I have corn in the microwave. What you I don't know, not much. Um, let's just get, okay, I'll be back, guys, with my plate. All right, guys, so here's my plate. I'm going to do it the other way, too. Here it is, meatloaf and mashed potatoes and corn and zucchini, guys. So delicious. Can't wait to have it. I'm going to eat my dinner now. All right, guys, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. When you subscribe to my channel, you really help my channel grow. And I so, so appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the notification button with the bell so you guys can be notified every time I upload a new video. Like and share and comment down below. Thank you so much for coming into my kitchen with me and creating. I love all of you. I'm going to go eat now. So, so yummy. Comfort food. Up the. Yeah, yeah. Bye, guys. She's on next one.